Well hello there folks, this is Lyage and welcome to a video for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. This video is going to be another playstyle guide, which if you haven't seen any of my previous ones, means that we are going to be covering a particular way to play one of the game's weapon types, specifically in a way that is either less conventional or at least just very interesting to play. Now I do have to admit, I don't know how much more time playing Sunbreak I have left in me. I think I have essentially given up reaching the end of the anomaly grind. Just with how slow you gain levels and how much of a slog the high tier quests can get, for only marginal improvements in my builds, it doesn't really seem worth it at this point. But regardless of that, I still have been having my fun playing around with all the different weapon types and seeing what new builds and playstyles I can mess around with. And so speaking of, there is one playstyle that I have planned for a video for a while now. If you've watched a few of my recent videos, you may remember me mentioning that it has often been the case that I would plan to make a video months before actually releasing it. And no, I'm not spending all that time working on the video, it's more of a me getting distracted by other things type of deal. But anyways, the reason I'm mentioning all this is just a very roundabout way of saying that upon releasing this video, I have no additional Sunbreak videos in my plans at this time. And so does that mean I'm done with videos? Well, no, but it does mean that having completed my planned content, things will probably be a lot slower as I come up with new ideas, and I may even be possibly looking into content outside of Rise and Sunbreak. But I think that's enough boring channel update stuff, as you're probably here for this cool video, and really the main reason I wanted to give this context was to hype things up, because you see, out of my planned videos, I have saved the best for last. I'm sure you've already figured it out from the title and footage that I've been showing, but this playstyle will be all about the Gunlance. In the context of my channel, the Gunlance has always had a bit of a special place. My first video was a Gunlance guide, and the weapon has probably been my most used across all the Monster Hunter games. Which is also why I've been a bit sad to admit that in Sunbreak, I haven't given the weapon all that much attention. This isn't to say that the weapon hasn't been amazing in Sunbreak, actually I think the additions the Gunlance have received have made it more fun than ever. Really, I just have had a bit of a switch axe addiction problem, you know, uh, just wire stepping through all my problems, uh, but no more. It is finally time to rekindle my love for the Gunlance, and so I have been trying out a new playstyle for the weapon that, okay now this will sound bad but hear me out, has been one of the most difficult playstyles for me to learn but also the most fun I have had playing the Gunlance. Welcome to what I'm calling the Heavenly Gunlance. Now let's rewind a few months ago. At this time, the fifth title update had released for Sunbreak, adding the Elder Dragon Amatsu to the game. After my first hunt against Amatsu, I had gone ahead and uploaded the footage to this channel, just to share my reactions to a very cool fight. But on this video, I received a comment, hoping for a new Gunlance guide incorporating the Title Update 5 content. Specifically, this comment mentions the new armor skill obtained from Amatsu, Heaven Sense, and talks about how drastically it changes the Gunlance, even going as far as to say making it their favorite weapon ever. Now that obviously got my attention, so to start things off here, let's take a look at this particular skill. So first things first, we gotta go ahead and defeat Amatsu. That is going to be the bare minimum requirement to make any build that will work with our new playstyle. So yeah, I apologize that this once again locks everything I will talk about into the endgame content. But once we have defeated Amatsu, we want to take a look at its armor. On three of the Amatsu armor pieces, we will find a unique skill that we can't get anywhere else. This is Heaven Sense. Let's read the description. Activates when not taking damage for a while during combat with a large monster. The effect is lost when you are knocked back or stray too far from the monster. Okay, so this first part tells us that whatever the skill does, it'll turn on automatically in combat if we don't get hit, and it'll turn off if we take a knockback or if we get too far away from the monster. That sounds reasonable, so it's some sort of buff that we receive by playing aggressively and not taking hits. Now then, on the right here we can read what the actual effects for the different levels of the skill are. First we have level 1. Decreases damage once and reduces stamina consumption while active. So that means once we fulfilled the previous conditions, these are some buffs we get. But it continues. 
performing a switch skill swap will recover sharpness and reload ammo. Now that is already very interesting. For a Blade Master, being able to recover sharpness with an animation as quick as the switch skill swap sounds downright overpowered. Surely it must be the most minuscule amount to compensate, right? Well, uh, let me show you. Here I have a gun lance with a decent chunk of purple sharpness. I can't tell you the exact numerical values, but I'd guess by default this is about 20 to 30 of the game's sharpness units. And now I will grind it down to white, and in practical terms, that purple sharpness took 5 full bursts to burn through. Now we can test the skill. I can do this in the training room, just standing next to the dummy will count for our activation condition. After a short time here, we can see the pop-up telling us that Heaven Scent has activated. So now, in theory, a switch skill swap will restore some sharpness. Let's see how much we get. Okay, uh, that just took us to full. Well, at least in defense of whetstones, if I were to abuse my gun lance all the way down to blue sharpness, it takes us three whole switch skill swaps to top us up, as opposed to one sharpen, so that's something I guess. Now you might also remember that this skill mentioned reloading ammo in addition to restoring sharpness. Well obviously that was meant to be a concession to gunners, as they don't use sharpness, so giving a free reload seems like a pretty good trade. And while I haven't messed with any particular builds, this certainly sounds like it could be quite good for some of those really slow to reload ammo types for certain bowguns. But wait, isn't there one particular blade master weapon that both has sharpness and needs to reload ammo? Well for now I'm just gonna hold that thought because we aren't finished with the skill effects yet. Now for Heaven Sent level 2. This reads, reduces time until activation. Seems simple enough, that just means we will get our effects faster and if we are hit, we don't have to wait as long for it to come back. If I time this out, from the moment I take a hit to the time the skill activates again, this seems to go from about 33 seconds at level 1 to 18 seconds at level 2. Pretty good. But if you're trying to think about whether or not the jump from level 1 to level 2 is worth it, don't, because now we will look at level 3. Heaven Sent level 3. Also nullifies stamina and sharpness consumption. Well then. And just to sweeten the deal, we also have, performing a switch skill swap removes or reduces status ailments. So yeah, when combined with the level 1 effect, this uh, basically removes sharpening completely. And really for almost any weapon this is quite big. The negated stamina consumption is also nice, but it's really huge for the likes of the dual blades and the bow. So now, this isn't a dual blades video, but I have to say, out of all the weapon types, that one is probably the one that benefits the most from this skill. But then why am I making a gunlance video? Well, let me tell you, when I first heard that this skill was life-changing for the gunlance, I wasn't convinced. We are now into the main point of discussion for this video, and that would be, how exactly does this skill benefit the gunlance? Now, probably the first thought most people would have is the infinite sharpness, obviously. And yes, it just so happens that the Gunlance is one of the most sharpness-hungry weapons out there, so this makes a lot of sense. But the thing is, I still wasn't seeing it. Because you see, traditionally when I played the Gunlance, I was playing for the gun part. And just like how you wouldn't sharpen your bowgun, I didn't really care too much about sharpening my Gunlance. Of course I wouldn't, a shell does the same damage regardless of whether my gun lance is purple or green. And honestly, I would turn up my nose at those who play the gun lance without firing a single shell. I think a part of me was scared to admit that a lack of scaling on the shells meant that you could eventually make a build strong enough that the lance's raw damage would always be superior to your shelling. But in a show of defiance, I would always make my gun lance build to be extremely shelling focused. First things first, I would use the few skills I could to max out my shelling damage. From that point on, the rest of my skills would be for comfort. Guard level 5, Evade Extender, Wirebug Whisper, maybe even some Partbreaker. Any attribute relating to my lance damage, including sharpness, would be flat out ignored. And while I certainly think there was a lot of fun to be had with these shelling focused builds, I suppose my outlook was a bit misguided. You see, all along, the gun lance was supposed to be a weapon of two parts, a gun and a lance. If you really wanted to play to spirit of the weapon, the two parts should be working together, not competing for dominance. Okay, I suppose I'm being a bit overly dramatic, really it's up to the player to play the way they want to, and whatever works for one person might not for someone else. But still, I have started to find that there is a certain satisfaction in playing the weapon in a way that makes use of all of its features, and that includes both the shelling attacks and the lance ones. 
So now that I have grown as a character and decided to think about my lance's damage, infinite sharpness does sound pretty dang good. And if this was the only thing we were to take away from the heaven sent skill, I think it would still be a very good fit for the gun lance. But remember, the gun lance is a weapon of two halves, and heaven sent has another part that plays to the weapon's other half. If we recall one of Heaven Sense effects, performing a switch skill swap can allow us to reload ammo. And hold on, the gun lance does in fact use ammo, so does that work to reload it? The answer is that it sure does. And look at this, not only does the switch skill swap reload our ammo, but it also reloads our worm stake. This actually gives us a faster alternative to a full reload if we need to reload our stake. But we are now getting to the part of this video where things are gonna get weird. So even though we have gained a new way to reload, I unfortunately still had to say, so what, upon learning about this. Because the thing about our fancy new reload is that it is not faster than a quick reload. Not only that, but it doesn't work nearly as well as the quick reload does in combos. But the thing is, I really wanted this new reload to be better than the quick reload in some way. You see, there is some potential in the swap reload, as we can do it at any time, unlike the quick reload, which must be done after certain attacks. Plus, maybe the worm stake reload could also come in handy too. If I could just find one use case where the swap reload provided some benefit over the quick one, then I could be convinced that Heaven Sent was truly a perfect fit for the Gunlance. So I went and tested a bunch of combos, specifically with the goal of seeing which reload would let me perform more full bursts faster to determine if I could find one case where the swap reload would be faster. My first few tests weren't great. You see, even though we can swap reload right after a full burst, this resets our combo and we don't have the fastest path to another full burst. Meanwhile, while we can't quick reload after the full burst, we can go straight into the downward slam right after the reload. Plus we also get to make the wide sweep part of our combo, which some would argue is the whole reason to be doing this combo anyways. Overall, out of the few things I tried, the quick reload combo is still faster to loop and probably more damage too because of the wide sweep. Perhaps there was something I didn't try though, so if you know of another way to loop a full burst combo using the swap reload that is faster, please let me know in the comments. But wait one second before you start typing because I just said if you know of another way. As it turns out, I did end up finding one specific situation where, using the swap reload, I can perform more full bursts faster than if I was using the quick reload. Before I explain it, I'm just going to put on some footage of these two methods side by side. We are starting on the exact frame that a full burst is being fired. The first method to perform a three more full bursts wins. Well, I think I've done it. If all we cared about was firing full bursts, then we officially have a method that allows us to perform more full bursts per minute than ever before. So let's break this method down. Remember, the main advantage of the swap reload over the quick reload is that we can do it directly after a full burst. This saves us time that we would have spent doing an admittedly powerful wide sweep before the quick reload. But the time we then save is lost because the quick reload can go right into the downward slam. However, what if we actually could go from the swap reload into a downward slam? My first thought when I asked this question was to use the blast dash. We can do this move from a standstill, and it ends with the same downward slam that lets us do a full burst. I did in fact try this against the quick reload combo, but unfortunately it is still slower. Wait, hold on. Uh, this is kind of awkward. So hi, I'm currently speaking to you from the editing process, and as you can clearly see, I was completely wrong about this Blast Dash combo having a slower loop time than the Quick Reload one. I was so sure about it too, and that was because before I wrote the script, I did a test recording of the two methods side by side, and in that one, I had observed that the Quick Reload looped faster. I can think of a few potential reasons for this. First, the time it takes to perform a blast dash can vary, as you can release the button slightly early to launch before it happens automatically. And second, we can spend a variable amount of time in the air, as we choose when to end the dash with the downward slam. 
I can then infer that I was working with slightly slower timing on my first comparison, which resulted in the method taking slightly longer to loop. Anyways, while this does contradict my original script a bit, overall this shouldn't make a huge difference, as our previous combo is far faster than both of these combos. If anything, we can just think of this Blast Dash combo as a nice little backup combo to use in case we can't perform a reverse blast, and in fact, I already had been doing this in some of my footage anyways, so it's just as well. Alright, now back to my original voiceover. I'm gonna have to cut a few lines out, and this is gonna be an awkward transition since the poor guy doesn't have all the information, but just try to cut him some slack, okay? But remember the footage I just showed you. If you had a keen eye, you would recognize the move I performed not as Blast Dash, but Reverse Blast. Now Reverse Blast, which I made a very good video on by the way, has a few cool differences to the default Blast Dash. One of them being that the startup time is far shorter. And so finally, we have saved enough time to beat out the quick reload combo, at least in terms of loop time. Let me quickly go over how to perform this combo in case the footage was confusing. We'll start with an empty gun lance. Assuming we have hung around the monster long enough, Heaven Scent will be activated. First, perform a switch skill swap with the input of the left trigger plus the top and right face buttons. This reloads us. Next, immediately input Reverse Blast. This has the input of the left trigger and the right face button. Because we will always be swapping scrolls, make sure it is equipped on both of them. Now if you aren't familiar with Reverse Blast, the skill has its name for a reason. It goes backwards. We don't want that though because we are trying to hit the monster with our attacks. So as you input Reverse Blast, hold the analog stick away from the monster. You will move in the opposite direction and instead fly towards the monster. Now as soon as we are in range, we want to hit the top face button. And this will let us do our downward slam. If we started from point blank, we would be mashing this button to leave the dash and hit the ground as soon as possible. You see, if we were trying to save time here, we want to be flying as little as possible. Of course, if the monster moved out of range in the meantime, then feel free to close the distance with the dash. And that's a benefit that this combo gives that the quick reload combo couldn't do at all. Just take note, if you fly too far with Reverse Blast, you will eventually stop midair, and after this stop you can no longer perform the slam, but instead perform a midair stab, which won't combo into a full burst. But anyways, once you do perform the slam, just hit the right face button to full burst and we have completed the combo. We can now loop with another swap reload and keep going. So there we have it. With the power of Heaven Scent, we not only don't have to worry about sharpness, but we have a really interesting new combo to play with. Now is this combo optimal for damage? Well, I doubt it. So on one hand, we can do more full bursts faster, but on the other hand, we lose the wide sweep. But on the other other hand, I guess we get the hits from Reverse Blast. But on the other 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 hand, the full burst loses the one shell that was used to fire the blast. So maybe these factors make them come out about even, but as I often do in these videos, I tend to judge playstyles not on their DPS, but how they feel to play. And I have to say from trying this combo out a bit, it was showing some huge potential just from an enjoyment perspective. I suppose however we should now address the elephant in the room. We have to spend wirebugs on reverse blast. Yes, I may have set my wirebugs to infinite in the training room, but in practice we can really loop this combo only 2-3 to three times before having to wait. But I do have a few counterpoints to that. First, this is fine because the quick reload combo isn't going anywhere. We can spend a few bugs to get the quick bursts out, and then do the standard combo while waiting. Second, remember the swap reload also reloads our worm stake. Well then, maybe we should spend the worm stake. Instead of looping the combo immediately, after the full burst we could go into the worm stake shot. This both lets us get some value out of the worm stake and also buys us some additional time for our wire bugs to recharge. In my case, I've been using Erupting Cannon as my worm stake, as it'll encourage me to use more lance attacks too. We also have a few more factors to consider in terms of wirebug management. In our build, we can add things like Wirebug Whisperer, Wind Mantle, and even Frenzied Bloodlust. With Reverse Blast already having a quick cooldown, these skills should hopefully let us use it pretty freely. So at this point, a relatively interesting build is starting to take shape. We have a combo that in theory lets us spam full bursts pretty quickly, so probably this is best played with a normal type gun lance. In addition, we can pretty freely throw out worm stakes or erupting cannons, and in the case of the latter, this should provide us with plenty of uptime for the lance damage buff. 
Because our sharpness should always be pristine, we should find that our melee damage is pretty good too, and thus have an excuse to swing our lance around a bit more. And so, I think we've found ourselves a pretty sensible gunlance playstyle that perfectly combines both halves of the weapon. Perhaps this was the idea that the comment on my video was going for, although maybe minus the weird reverse blast tech. And if so, then I'd agree that this is a very fresh and interesting playstyle for the gunlance. Before I move on, I want to make it clear that I have currently covered enough for you to put together a very nice build and have yourself a great time, and in fact I would even encourage you to try such a build out. Alright, well now I am going to ruin it. The redirection skill is an armor skill that was added in base Sunbreak. With this skill enabled, if we were to perform a switch skill swap at the exact moment that an attack would hit us, we will gain the ability to dodge through it. In addition, at level 2, performing this dodge will also partially recharge our wirebug gauge. So this skill has been on my radar for a while. In particular, the wirebug recharge seemed very appealing for some of my gunlance builds, as this weapon can be quite wirebug hungry. But in the end, I never really ended up running this skill consistently. The reason for this is that the redirection dodge is pretty difficult to pull off. In terms of timing, we need to essentially hit the dodge the moment an attack hits us. While the window isn't unreasonably tight, it's still far less forgiving than most counters that different weapons have access to. Just overall, I found myself struggling to pull it off as often as I wanted to, and the payoff it gave me was hardly worth the risk. But hold on, the situation has changed now. If we pull off a redirection evade, it also comes with a free reload. Well, I'm sold now, I guess it's time for me to finally get good at using redirection. So you know how I mentioned at the start of this video how this was one of the most difficult playstyles for me to learn? Well, it's all because of this. Friendly reminder that you are free to not include any of this in your own playstyle. For me, however, it's too late. I was interested. Like, just picture this scenario. We reverse blast towards a monster into a full burst, but right after the burst, the monster attacks us, so we switch skill swap. Being perfectly timed, this triggers redirection, which not only lets us dodge the attack, but gives us a free reload and even refunds some of the wire bug we just spent on the reverse blast. And so, right after landing from the dodge, having a full clip, we reverse blast again into another full burst. Essentially, if we time our combos just right, each swap reload can be a tool for letting us dodge attacks. And it is this fact that really sells it for me. Maybe the overall DPS isn't any better or maybe even worse than a more traditional playstyle, but it's this fluidity, this ability to weave together offense and defense that really elevates this playstyle to something special. Now actually playing it on the other hand, well, let's just say that I think I've gotten to a point where I can take on most things with the playstyle. And when I actually get in the zone, I become an absolute beast with the weapon, and it feels super good. While it did take me a while to get to that point, I am making this video with the hope that I can now share what I've learned to help any of you pick things up far faster than I did. Okay, so now we're at a weird point in this video. Compared to my usual playstyle guides, I haven't really done things in the usual order. Typically, we would start with our switch skill overviews before then covering armor skills. However, it appears I have spent quite a lot of time talking and we haven't fully covered either of those usual topics. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to run through my switch skill loadouts, but in terms of technique demonstrations, I'm basically done already, so I'm not going to spend too long on those. Then we'll go over our build and some relevant skills, but the biggest ones have also already been covered. Finally, we will do our demo hunts, and I highly recommend watching through them because that will be where I discuss how I have managed to make the playstyle work in practice. Alright, in the interest of not making this video way too long, let's get going. Okay, switch skill loadout, here we go. The first thing we need to remember is that because we plan on swapping scrolls often, we want to make sure to keep our two scrolls consistent. In the case of all but one of our switch skills, I will have the same loadout on both scrolls because I don't want to perform an unexpected move out of nowhere. For our reload, we will be using the quick reload instead of the guard reload. For a normal type full burst playstyle, this will usually be preferred and we will still want to have access to the quick reload combo. For the charged shelling slot, we will take blast dash because it is blast dash and why wouldn't we take it? In the worm stake slot, we will put in the erupting cannon. 
I mentioned before that I wanted this to encourage the use of more lance attacks, plus it fires quicker than the regular worm stake. I did consider putting the worm stake on one scroll and the erupting on the other, but ended up being in a situation of never being on the right scroll for the one I want. Now for silk binds. We already talked about the importance of reverse blast in our combos, so that is going on both scrolls. Finally, I am splitting two moves between two scrolls for our last slot. On one scroll, I will have Ground Splitter. This is our classic Gunlance Silkbind for increasing shelling damage. If I have Wirebugs to spare, I do like to throw this out because more shell damage is good. Finally, on the other scroll, I have put in Bullet Barrage. This is of course because the move has crazy damage. Despite our playstyle's focus, I will never say no to a nice opening that lets me do a Bullet Barrage. Generally with these two skills, since I choose to use them at deliberate moments, I can keep track of which scroll has which, well, most of the time. And done. We could say that was done in record time, but I'm looking at the word count on my script and uh, we gotta get a move on. So now to go over our build, and once again for this part, we're gonna try to speed through this. I do have to admit, however, part of this reason is that my build is honestly not at all optimized, even by my standards. Let me start with my weapon. For shelling type, we are looking for a normal type gun lance because that will give us the most damage from full bursts. Until recently, I had just been running the max level Komodo gun lance. The reason for this being its natural purple sharpness and good slots. However, we now have the primordial Malzano gun lance with even better slots and a natural level 8 normal shelling, so once you are able to get to that point, it should be a very nice option. The only issue here is that it deeply hurts me to have all these large slots and nothing to fit in them. Like right now, I'm just sitting at a measly level 4 attack boost because I still lack a 2 point attack jewel. I've even gone as far as to slot in more comfort skills like guard up and part breaker simply because I just felt better using the large slots for them instead of a 1 point attack boost jewel. Well, I could have access to such jewels if I just did a bit more anomaly grinding, so that's really just a me problem. Anyways, here's a quick scroll through of the set that I'm currently using, including decorations and augments. Now to look at the skill overview. Even though things aren't optimized here, I can hopefully get across the idea that I'm going for. Ideally, I wanted to focus both on maxing out my shell damage while still fitting in as much melee damage as possible. Starting with shell damage, our basics are load shells, artillery, and the new Gunlancer's favorite, sneak attack, for that percentage based increase to shell damage on hits from behind. Next, I tried to fill out what space we had left with stuff for melee damage, so we got weakness exploit, critical boost, and attack boost, admittedly only at level 4 right now. With large slot decorations or perhaps some better augments and talismans, ideally you could get this maxed out, probably replacing some of the less important skills with more levels. For comfort skills however, I am still running some guard skill, as well as guard up, mostly as a safety net. In theory, you could play this playstyle and only dodge attacks with redirection and reverse blast, but I'm not that good. Oh yeah, let's not forget about another high value skill, Intrepid Heart. With its single slot cost, it is honestly worth it for almost any build nowadays, but its value is even higher in this playstyle, as it can save us from a knockback which if you remember is the condition for causing us to lose the effects of Heaven Sent. Then that just leaves us with our core skills that we explained earlier, which as a reminder includes Heaven Sent, Redirection, and anything Wirebug related. Anything else is whatever I just felt filling slots with or stuff that came as a byproduct from certain armor pieces. Hopefully altogether, this gives you a good idea of things to look for in a build, and I would highly encourage you to put together a set that feels the best for you. In that case, I believe that means it is time for some demo clips. I don't know how many people usually watch these segments in my guides, but in this particular case, I would recommend sticking around for these, as I will be using these clips as an opportunity to explain some tips on using the playstyle that I wasn't really able to cover in the training room. You see, while I was able to figure out how this playstyle would work on paper, it wasn't until using it in practice that I was able to really understand what works and what doesn't, and so hopefully by showing some proper gameplay, I can more easily convey to you the things that I learned. So now then, on to the hunts. 
We'll start off with something easy, well, at least in comparison to the other things I'll be hunting today. I do actually have to say, I did my recordings a little bit backwards, starting with trying to get a clean hunt against my most difficult target first. Basically, I had put myself through the ringer early, and I ended up being shocked at how easy the lower tier monsters had become. So let's use this opportunity to go over some of my tips while my gameplay is nice and clean. Alright, so first and foremost, the most important piece of advice I can give you for using this playstyle is... Don't use redirection. Wait, what? Didn't I just do a whole segment on how redirection is a key part of making this a unique playstyle? Surely I wouldn't have included it in this video if I wasn't planning on using it. Well, okay, allow me to explain. Rewinding a bit here, let's take note of one of the first things I do. Upon starting the fight, we take notice of a predictable attack coming our way. Knowing this, we have a few options for dealing with it. We could block this quite easily, or probably even dodge to the side, but of course, we could have even used redirection. Instead, however, our method of choice is Reverse Blast. I may have briefly glossed over this, but in case you weren't aware, Reverse Blast is a move that provides us with ample iframes on startup. Once again, this was covered in my Cool Reverse Blast video. And so knowing this, we can quite easily use this move to negate almost any attack coming at us. In this particular situation, my use of the Reverse Blast allows me to avoid the attack, close the distance, and get right into my full burst combo. So overall, this is just a great option for allowing us to maintain aggression, and timing-wise, I find it to be far easier than redirection. I really do think what allowed me to excel with this playstyle was understanding that in most situations, Reverse Blast is a great defensive option as opposed to trying to use redirection on everything. Okay, so were we really not going to use redirection then? Well, I really just wanted to get your attention with a bold statement. Technically, there's more to my tip. Don't use redirection unless you are confident. If there's a surefire way to find yourself carding, it is trying to use redirection in a panic. Remember, the Gunlance is technically a defensive weapon. Even without Reverse Blast, remember you have a real sturdy shield. When deciding if I should try to use redirection, I want to consider a few factors. First, would redirection benefit me? The original benefit of this skill is, of course, the Wirebug Recharge, and if I already have Wirebugs to spare, then I might as well Reverse Blast instead. We do have our secondary benefit now, too, which is the Reload from Heaven Sent. If we are planning to use our Switch Skill Swap to reload anyways, then it may just be worth timing that swap to trigger Redirection, too. But the other and arguably more important factor I would consider before attempting Redirection is... What type of attack is coming my way? This is a bit of a risk versus reward type of deal. Obviously, if a monster is winding up for an extremely powerful attack, I'd feel a bit less inclined to risk a redirection dodge when missing it would hurt real bad. On the contrary, if something like a roar or a light attack, I might even use redirection even if I didn't need to, just because why not? And finally, it also comes down to how comfortable I feel timing the dodge for a given move. And this just comes down to my experience with fighting different monsters. With this Gold Rathian, for example, I pull off plenty of redirections because I know the timings for her moves very well. In the next hunts, you're going to see far fewer of these. And so, I hope that gives you a general idea of how to incorporate redirection into this playstyle, which basically in summary is, use it as much as you feel comfortable. I certainly haven't mastered it myself, but I think that's honestly fine because it just means that this playstyle has a nice high skill ceiling. And with that, let's get another demo hunt rolling. I did kind of uh, spend this whole time doing my redirection lecture, but hopefully the clips I had rolling were also useful to give a general feel of the playstyle. Boop! Let's cover a couple more topics in this next hunt. In the interest of not hunting the same few endgame monsters that I'm comfortable with in these videos, I chose something that I haven't fought a lot of. Weirdly enough, I was less confident that I could get a clean hunt against Risen Camellios compared to the likes of Risen Kushala or Valstrax. I was mostly worried about being unable to read any of the monster's attacks, but as it turns out, those worries ended up being unfounded. I ended up running in circles around this guy. Literally. Let's talk about Sneak Attack. I briefly mentioned this armor skill as part of our build, and you might be familiar with its effects. 
Simply put, it is a percentage-based damage boost when attacking a monster from behind. Now for most weapons this isn't huge, because even with the boost you are most likely to be hitting a rather poor hit zone if you are hitting from the back. For Gunlance shells, however, this is life-changing, because shells do almost the same damage no matter where you hit. And so, if you are firing a shell behind a monster, you get basically all of that bonus sneak attack damage. Anyways, this is nothing new if you've been playing Gunlance in Sunbreak. Basically, if you are focused on shelling damage, then it is advisable to run sneak attack and try to attack from behind whenever possible. But you may have noticed from my footage by now, I have a pretty useful tool for circling around a monster. Oh look, it's Reverse Blast again. As we can see in numerous clips, the concept is simple. I simply blast dash down the length of the monster and try to angle my swing such that it turns me around. Oftentimes my angle isn't perfect, but if it's done well, we can get our full burst with that extra sneak attack damage. Now let's think back to our core playstyle combo that we devised back in the training room. Remember, the one where we reverse blast, full burst, and then switch skill swap to reload. Well as it turns out, this is basically what we've been doing this whole time. The only difference is that we are actually making use of our reverse blast's mobility to both keep us in range of the monster and set us up for more sneak attack damage. Let's go over another feature of our swap reload that you may have noticed me doing as well. Even if we aren't using redirection, after performing the switch skill swap, we have the option to do what is known as a swap evade. This of course has nothing to do with heaven set, as this was a base feature added with the switch skill swap. But still, because we are swapping so often to reload, this gives us convenient access to a quite powerful repositioning tool. So anytime we do a swap to reload, we can decide if we would like to reposition ourselves, say to get into a better sneak attack position for example. In addition, this evade is also just good as a dodge in its own right, so it's yet another way to get us out of danger, especially if, say, we were a bit too overzealous trying to time a redirection. Oh, and it goes without saying that the swap evade, and or other dodges for that matter, is far more usable with max level evade extender, which is why that'll just be in all my builds. So anyways, overall, with the huge amount of mobility provided by this playstyle, I could quite easily outmaneuver this Camellios and sort of just go to town. Oh yeah, by the way, I finally got a chance to make use of the fact that Heaven Sent can clear statuses too. Bye bye, poison. Alright, so moving on to our final demo, and definitely the most challenging hunt for me. Being both the hardest monster and the first one that I recorded, this gameplay is going to be a bit less refined. Still, I felt it would be important to include this particular matchup because as it turns out, I needed to get some revenge. You see, our target, Primordial Malzano, made a bit of a mockery of me the first time I fought it. I actually have footage of this. In my very first hunt against it, which I streamed, I boldly challenged it with this exact same Gunlance playstyle. I uh, lasted about 5 minutes before shamefully running back to camp and picking up a switch axe. Really there was no reason for me to do this, but at the time I had barely used this shiny new playstyle and I was afraid I would do poorly since I didn't know the monster's moveset. And so, for this video, I did a lot of the practice for this playstyle against this particular target. It certainly was a bit rough at times, but it was through this practice that I was both able to learn the various tips that I've shared with you throughout this video, as well as the moveset of this particular monster. But really, at this point, there won't be anything new for me to cover in this hunt, so I think I'll leave you with a couple minutes of my good clips, and then we'll wrap things up.
Alright, that's gonna just about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I may have gotten my thoughts across in a rather disjointed manner on this one, but even still, I hope you were able to at least get some useful information or ideas out of it. Overall, I really enjoyed my recent time playing the Gunlance in this manner, and I've always been the proponent of ways to play the game that are first and foremost, enjoyable. If you watched all the way to this point, thank you very much for watching. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I currently don't have any videos in the works after this one, but that doesn't mean I'm going to not be making anything else in the future. If anything, I really just wanted to get this video out as I had already been putting it off, and with this done, the pressure will be off so I'll probably take it easy for a bit. But I want to say that I still have some more ideas circulating, so once I'm feeling up to it, I might begin work on some new content in the not so distant future. Well for now, I suppose that's all I have to say, so once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.